Could Ukraine get the Viper Shield? Missiles are getting smarter, radar threats are evolving daily, and the F-16, the jet that's been flying longer than most TikTok influencers have been alive, well, it's still expected to dodge all of that with, what, good vibes and optimism? Not anymore. Today we're talking about Viper Shield. It's not sci-fi, it's not classified, it's real, and it just might be the invisible armor that's let legacy fighters survive in a drone-saturated, jamming-heavy, radar-lit future. And yeah, we're going to talk about whether Ukraine's F-16s might get it too. Hey friends, I'm Wes O'Donnell, Air Force veteran, current war nerd, and a guy who still has nightmares about soldering radar boards in a sweltering hangar. If you like military tech that doesn't suck and geopolitical commentary with bite, hit that subscribe button before NATO runs out of acronym patches. The skies over Ukraine aren't just dangerous, they're a no-fly zone for anything that blinks wrong on radar. We're talking S-400s, Pantsiers, Iranian drones, and enough electronic warfare noise to drown out half of the Eurovision Song Contest. The F-16s Ukraine has gotten from its Western allies are great jets, incredible airframes, but they were born in a different era. Ah, a simpler time when you didn't have to dodge quadcopters armed with RPGs or spoofing radars powered by AI. The challenge is to modernize the F-16 fast enough to make it survivable, and not just in theory, but in a battlefield where real people die if the tech doesn't work. That's where Viper Shield comes in. Viper Shield is an ANALQ254V1 electronic warfare suite, and it's built by L3 Harris with Lockheed Martin's help. Think of it as a digital force field that doesn't make your jet invincible, it just makes it exponentially harder to shoot down. It's fully digital, software defined, and modular. That last part matters because instead of cutting into the jet and rewiring the whole thing like you're restoring a classic Mustang, you can just plug the system in. Internal installs will go into Block 70 or 72 aircraft. For older F-16s, they're going to have to have external pods, perfect for Block 50s. So what's under the hood? Well, well, first of all, radar warning receivers that don't just chirp, it paints a clear picture of what's lighting you up digital RF memory jammers that doesn't just scream into the void, it mimics, misleads, and messes with radar returns like a mischievous ghost, and commercial off-the-shelf architecture. That means lighter weight, easier upgrades, cheaper replacements, and maintenance that doesn't require three PhDs and a goat sacrifice to the machine gun. The result is a fighter that's not just a missile magnet, it can duck dodge and disappear, electronically speaking. So here's the big question, could Ukraine's F-16s get Viper Shield? Well, officially, not yet, but unofficially, the odds are shifting in their favor. Here's why. First, six nations already have contracts for Viper Shield. Bahrain, Bulgaria, Slovakia, Morocco, Taiwan, and Jordan. And guess what Ukraine is getting? Block 70s, the exact models Viper Shield was designed for. Slovakia is the wild card to watch. This is the same country that donated its MiG-29 fleet and S-300s to Ukraine. If someone's going to sneak a Viper Shield across the fence to Ukraine, it's probably Slovakia. Also, Ukraine's already working with the U.S. Air Force's 68th Electronic Warfare Squadron to tailor EW pods to their specific threat environment. Denmark and the Netherlands are pitching in with pylons and gear. So even if Viper Shield doesn't arrive tomorrow, the EW groundwork is being laid today. And don't forget, there's a potted version of Viper Shield, which means even older F-16s or other Ukrainian, possibly Soviet jets can get in on the action without a structural overhaul. That makes logistics and politics a lot easier. And we've seen stranger equipment transfers in this war. Viper Shield is more than a cool gadget, it's doctrine in a box. Think about it, we're finally giving aging aircraft a realistic shot at surviving modern airspace. Instead of relying on stealth alone, Viper Shield brings survivability through electronic misdirection. It makes coalition warfare more efficient. Shared parts, shared software lanes, even shared tactics. Maintenance becomes a conversation, not a guessing game. In Ukraine's case, getting Viper Shield or something like it would be a signal. Not just that NATO's serious about survivability, but that legacy platforms still matter when you give them the tools to win. And with full production ramping up by mid-2026, 
The timing couldn't be better. The world doesn't need more jets. It needs more jets that can survive. That means investing in the invisible stuff. Radar confusion, signal spoofing, software updates that drop via USB like a new playlist. But let's not kid ourselves. Viper Shield is not a miracle cure. It won't turn an F-16 into an F-35. It's still a defensive system in a war where offensive capabilities often win the day. Ukraine still needs seed platforms, suppression of enemy air defense. It still needs drones. It still needs pilot training, long-range missiles, and hardened airfields. But adding Viper Shield to the mix, well, that makes every other investment safer. It's the insurance policy that keeps your pilot alive long enough to hit the target, come home, and do it again. We're watching a transformation from Vietnam-era jets with gray paint and good intentions to digitally cloaked fighters built to serve in high-threat airspace. Viper Shield is a strategy, a shift toward survivability over speed, adaptation over perfection. So will Ukraine get Viper Shield? Well, the jury's still out. But the pieces are on the board, and if you've been watching this war closely, you know this. Ukraine tends to get what it wants, and what it needs, eventually. And when it does, it puts it to work faster and smarter than anyone expected. Invisible armor might just be the next big weapon in this war. That's it for today, friends. Thanks for watching. If you liked this breakdown and want a little more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. It helps keep the channel healthy and keeps me from freelancing as a military accuracy consultant for bad Netflix war movies. Until next time, stay frosty and keep your radar warning receivers quiet. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.